we take the month of February and we say, how little can we spend? Right? So that means groceries. We're going to eat through the whole pantry. We're not going out to eat at all in my household this month. And we're going anything that's an optional luxury or just, hey, you know, I feel like a latte right now. Nope, not happening in February. This is a month about self-discipline and it's about, there, there's some, some reasons that, that are both good for our souls to just say we're going to take a month and stop. And there's actually some reasons that are good for us just knowing how lean can our families run for a month. And, and this is Abraham's Wallet. Join us weekly and create a culture in your family of multi-generational prosperity, spiritually, relationally, physically, intellectually, and financially. Run your home, your dough, like a biblical boss. Our audience is growing. Did you know that? I hope not in the way that I was over the... Christmas holidays. I just wanted to report that we haven't necessarily crossed 100,000 subscribers on YouTube yet. Did you get my joke? I'm growing sideways because I'm fatter. That's the joke. And you said our audience is growing. And I said, I hope they're not growing the way that I'm growing. Did you no, catch that? They're not becoming more rotund, if that's what you're asking. Well, we don't know that. I'm going to choose to believe they're not. But what they are doing is I've been getting about an a message or two per day from people who have subscribed to our email list, who have just written in to say thank you for what we're doing. And you guys might not think that uh, matters, but I appreciate I appreciate the the words of encouragement. So if you yeah. written an email, if you are saying email list, what? what? Well, you could just go to abrahamswallet.com, type in your email, and you would be on the email list too. We aren't always as... Uh, as diligent as we could be with with regular newsletters, but we do try to get out an email at least once a quarter with kind of some updates, uh, some resources. It's where you would get things like the the couple's marriage guide that's that's oh yeah been circulated and will continue to be circulated. So, anyways, I just thought that was encouraging, and I thought I would brag on us a little bit since it's I just you it. and it's just you and me here, you know. Yeah, you said uh, people who say that they appreciate what we're doing. I'm thinking of the new listener. What what are we doing here? We like to split our time about 50-50 between how to run a home and how to th specifically think about money and financial wisdom and all for the purposes of creating a multi-generational outpost mm -hmm. uh, in service of the King of Kings. So yeah. Uh, Okay. I'll well. tell you that here in uh, the Midwest, in the nation's Midwest, we're having our most exciting snowstorm of the season right now. And the roads are quite clear. And I did not have to fight uh, to get a parking spot outside of the old office today. And that's why you wore a tie? Yep. That's why I wore a tie. Because if you're going to die in a snowstorm, it's best look, to be look buttoned up. On point. There's another reason why a tie is appropriate today, and it's because mm -hmm. by the time this airs, we're going to be darn close to the end of kind of a, uh, I don't know, what's it called? Fat Tuesday in, in New Orleans, the day before Mardi Gras, or the, yeah. the day yeah, yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. You're yeah, supposed yeah. to just live it up and go wild yeah, because yeah, yeah. Soon, Beignets. soon the fasting begins, and yeah. we're we're in a similar season where you're kind of demonstrating some luxury with your personhood today. That's right. Because we're about to enter a season where there ain't going to be no luxury. That's right. Uh, there's going right. to be there's going to be some austerity. There's going to be some hatches will be battened down. Yeah. Um, and we're here to talk about today what we do first, and then maybe a little bit of of why we do it. We can do that in any order you want. I really have more on why. And if you have more on what, knock well, yourself out. All I want to say is because if you're new to the Abraham's Wallet podcast and we say Lodo Feb, there I've said it now, I've gotten it out on the table. Uh, if we say that and you don't have any idea what we're talking about, this episode's going to make no sense to you. So hmm. we have practiced this month of February 
for as long as we've been doing Abraham's Wallet for actually before it was even a podcast, back when we were just a blog, we were doing this. Once we had a challenge you could sign up for and we did it together and we reported how much we had collective, <laughs> collectively saved. But what it is, is it's we take the month of February and we say, how little can we spend uh, financially in the month of February? So that means groceries. We're going to eat through the whole pantry. We're not going out to eat at all in my household this month. And we're going anything that's an optional luxury or just, hey, you know, I feel like a latte right now. Nope, not happening in February. This is a month about self-discipline and it's about there, there's some some reasons that, that are both good for our souls to just say we're going to take a month and stop. And there's actually some reasons that are good for us just knowing how lean can our families run for a month. And I want to talk about both of those things when we get into the why. What we've done in the past as we've entered into February is we've done episodes that were on tactics. And I think, Stephen, what you were saying, the, the, you were going to focus more on the, the why we do this today. We're not going to get into a ton of tactics. So if you want tactics, like how could I, how could I save money? We've done those. Go if, if We always spell it L-O-D-O. And so you could go to abrahamswallet.com and you could find blogs on the topic of how we do this and even the tactics we use. It's true. You could could search on your favorite podcast platform and write L-O-D-O Abrahams and you would probably find the uh, podcast episodes. Yeah, probably. So we're not going to get into a whole lot of tactics today. I'm sure some of them will come out, but that's what it is. And I just wanted everybody to understand what the heck Lodo Feb is in case this is your first February here at uh, Abraham's Table. Excellent. You know what? You said Abraham's Table. This is actually Abraham's Wallet, although I appreciate that reference to our wonderful donors who are part of Abraham's Table. But I thought I found something really inspiring. If you're new and you're poking around, I just typed in Lodo Feb into the old Google search bar. Guess what were the first two hits? Uh, was us. So I work with families all the time who are encountering all different types of financial situations. Sometimes they call us because they're encountering uh, times of plenty and they need help. It's true. But other times they're calling us because they're encountering thin and lean days. And uh, I'll just say in the past six months, that's been more common uh, despite the fact that the the stock market's been doing well and things like that, a lot of employers have been pulling the reins a little bit. And I have talked to a lot of families, and I'm going to talk to more today before the day is over, who are going, uh, the income has stopped. I'm sure it's a temporary thing, but this this Lodo Feb is got a, a lot of spiritual whys behind it that are good for our souls. But like I said a second ago, there's also some really good just why this can be a helpful skill to say, I know that if I normally spend $7,000 a month to make my household run, I know that I can run it for $4,500. Um, yeah. And that helps you not do either dumb thing. Dumb thing yep. number one is to go, well, I lost my job, but we spend $7,000 a month. So we're going to keep spending $7,000 a month because that's right. just the only option. If you've, if you've gone through this exercise, it'll teach you, oh, there's all sorts of fat I can trim off. But it also helps you not go, well, I lost my job. So we're going to just be super careful. And I bet we'll only spend $2,000 a month. Well, you, you know, if you do this, you'll go, it doesn't matter how thin we slice the pie. There's some expenses that are going to happen. Yeah. And it's just a very helpful data point practically, especially in a time like this when there's some job uncertainty out in the world. So I said my whole point there about, <laughs> about that. No, why, that's good. But... That's good. We, you know, we uh, have told people who have never budgeted. If you're a young family, you're, you're okay. We just got a new job. We just got a new house. We really don't know what life costs and you want to budget. We teach people that the first thing you need to do is to track reality. You have to kind of go, what does life cost? And if you don't know the answer to that question, then quote, saving money doesn't mean anything because what are you saving from? Well, I don't know. You know, what's what's infinity minus 12? We we don't know the answer to that question. 
So um, we say tracking reality is the first step to trying to develop a budget and realizing, oh, we actually spend this much toward eating out. So a budget, which is giving this some room, but not giving it unlimited room might look like this clothing wise, et cetera, et cetera. So similarly, it's good to know we have some latitude between this is a big month for us. If, you know, uh, for instance, we do uh, Passover every year. So Passover is a big expenditure month for us. We know that it's going to be. Do you know what the bottom end of your latitude is? Do you know what a, a small month looks like? Have you intentionally done that for a month? As you said, it's just a very helpful thing to know when you look at the whole landscape of your family's finances, what a month looks like is really important. And this is a great way to set a baseline. That's right. So how you asked kind of some basics on how we do it. I'll take five minutes and talk about how we do it right. because most people that we did an episode maybe seven months ago where we actually talked through the average line items on families budgets. We took hundreds right. of budgets, rolled all the data up, normalized it for income and said, here's how much average families spend outside of housing, which for most people is not variable, meaning you either have a mortgage payment or you have a rent uh, payment. You can't change that. We don't We don't recommend during Lodofeb uh, foregoing any of the bills that are required uh, to be paid to keep you in good standing with your creditors. No, um, I feel like you should pay those. Yeah. So for most families, the next biggest item, single line on the budget is food. This one is so connected to, I think, how we think about you know, basic, are we living high on the hog or not, that a lot of families will, especially if you have little kids, this is an easy way for them to experience and participate in a little bit of, like we said, austerity. Like, oh, normally on Thursdays, we have salmon. But this month, we're having beans and rice and we can talk about the difference. Well, that piece of salmon is $40 now at Costco, but the, yeah. the beans and rice, we are, our whole family just ate for six. That's something that four-year-olds can understand just fine. Uh, it's also true. I've done this in the past where I went through our pantry and just pulled everything out and looked at it and was like, oh my goodness, we could probably live for nine months if, if the goal... <laughs> If the goal was pure survival, we could probably survive for many months without buying one food item. And so what we do is we try to say, let's eat through some of those reserves. Let's let's not have you know canned goods that we don't intend as long-term food storage just sitting in the back of the pantry. You have to be a little bit careful here, husbands. I think I'm talking mostly to the husbands here. Maybe <laughs> yeah. some of the wives are like this, but... My wife has said things like, we will have vegetables in Lodo Feb or we will never <laughs> do it again. So don't don't push it past the point of our home functions. Just like if you lost your job, you wouldn't say, well, I guess we're just not, we're going to fast Monday through Friday. You wouldn't be. Right. Afraid. So the goal is to be as thrifty and conservative as you can. And a few other tips. Obviously, we're not going out to eat unless... We dig into right here in my desk drawer. Oh, I have. Hold on. Ye old pile of gift cards and rewards cards. Yes. And things, things like that. And so look at this, Steve. I don't know if, if the camera is going to pick it up, but do you recognize that foil wrapped tennis ball can? And Yeah, with the, with the red lettering at the bottom, that looks like a Chipotle gift card. Right. I've had that for seven months in this desk drawer, and I've been thinking the whole time. Well, I'm not spending that now. That is going to be food on the family during Lodo Feb. That's because you're smart. This gift card is to a gun range. I'm not sure how that's going to help me. Well, that may or may not come into play during Lodo Feb. No. But anyways, we'll we'll save up things like, you know I love the local fast casual Mexican chain Cafe Rio. We all do. Well, they give you points every time you buy and... I think the average the average man walks in there and they go, "Oh, look, I have a free burrito today or whatever." Uh, yeah. Not not me. I accumulate those points for a whole year. Yes. And in Lodo Feb time, it can be a treat for the family. Hey, we aren't going to go we aren't going to go order pizzas or go out to dinner, but we can get Cafe Rio for free tonight. So That's great. Things like that. And then 
without going into detail on all the other tactics, I would just say we say no as a default to anything that we could push out. Meaning, yes. you know, even things like I had a drippy faucet that I replaced last weekend. It was very annoying, drip, drip. But if that had happened during February, I would have said that faucet's going to drip. It's costing us about 70 cents every week in extra water, but it's going to not be something I buy and replace now. And that's kind of just a training exercise for mm. for the soul in saying we can mm. say no to things we want now. Have the funds to say yes to it, but choose to say no as kind of a training exercise for myself, for my kids, whatever. So that's how we think about it. And uh, you, like I said, if you want the detailed tactics, we've got a lot of, of content on that. Wow. I'm so inspired. If, you wanna, if, you're, if the, you're at the end of your run right now and you'd like to cut it off right here, you can because that was great. Well, I feel a little bit chipper today because I don't know if the people have noticed, but it's been a month or so of not feeling 100%. And I feel like I got my voice today. So I oh, can actually nice. talk without the constant threat of the, the cough. So yeah, I feel anyway. like there's a little energy in your voice, which is nice. I'm going to throw in on uh, I'm going to throw a log on the fire that you have created and throw a Titus 211 on there, which is that God's spirit teaches us how to say no. And it means specifically to the flesh. I've, I've got, I was just meeting with some guys uh, this week, and we were looking at Ephesians 4, which says that we're putting off this old man. We're putting on this new man. We're saying no to all these things that we used to be part of. When we lived in the world, we, that we just had a green light for all sorts of mayhem, all sorts of evil, that we, it was just worldliness, and we didn't even know that it was. And there was just a green light for us. And as we grow up, we learn to say no and learn to push off these old things. And that is a real, I, I'm just seconding your motion. Uh, I'd like to second that emotion of you saying that we learn how to say no to ourselves, to our flesh, to our little desires, our demands that are never, nonstop. You brought up the word training, uh, which is the ding ding what I wanted to hit on. You know, I'm thinking of all of the places in your life where you need to learn the tool. We're getting into the how here, but the tools of things like submission, self-control, how to live inside of limits and, and not have it uh, throw you into a tizzy because you have limits that were put on you from the outside. Well, we talk, We did a whole episode back in the day about sleep training and the value of sleep training your children because when you do sleep training, you teach your child from the outset, you're not going to run the show. You're going to eat when we say. You're going to get up when we say. And what's built into that is a foundation, not that you can't have an obedient child and not do sleep training, but it's just a very natural step into obedience and that the child is going to is going to have to conform to out external pressures. So I'm, I'm thinking here, here's a, a list. Here's a list of all sorts of things. We got to have working limits on us, or a lot of us will slip into workaholism. I find myself in this all the time. We are guys who we are, we, they call us, uh, I don't know, entrepreneurs, guys who work for themselves. It's really hard to not work on stuff all the time. I, I have a wife who runs a business and, she can be working on emails in bed at night on her phone. And I can slip into that in all sorts of ways as well. Just think of the submission. I'm thinking of my teenager here, the submission of getting up to an alarm. You've got to learn submission. You've got to learn, I have to tailor my life to an outside force. Think about a guy like me who would like to lose a little weight and not do what comes naturally. Doing what comes naturally is how I got heavier than I want to be. So I have to submit to some outside pressures, some outside forces, make different decisions than I would naturally make. Don't make the decisions that you would naturally make, Stephen. Let's eat less ice cream, for instance. Listening, pa here I've thought of some other scenarios. Listening patiently as a husband as your wife is going on about something, what you want to do is jump in, interrupt her, and solve the problem. Well, that's real easy. You tell your mom to take a hike. 
but no, you're going to listen very calmly. You're going to wait, let her talk. Cause you're thinking this is our relationship here. I have to, I have to submit to what actually comes across as loving. My wife doesn't actually need me to solve the problem for her right now. What she needs is to be heard and to express herself. That's my role. That's what I'm doing right now. Similarly, what about a wife who's got a husband who's, we're going to do this thing. He's got this big idea. Let's all take a hike through the snow. I know it's going to be uncomfortable. We'll probably have two crying kids at the end of it, but I think this will be good for us. It'll invigorate us. And she's thinking, I have a better idea than that. Why don't we go to the gym and put the kids in childcare or whatever? She's thinking, I have a better idea, but you know what? She's going, I'm going to submit. I'm going to follow. She's got to, you know, it's that submitting yourself, being sub to the mission and going like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to restrict myself doing chores as a child. You got to do this. Well, I don't want to do that. I want to, you got this, we, this whole concept of we've got to be able to put ourselves under limits and be okay with it. Well, that's a biblical concept. First Timothy 4, 7 says, train yourself for godliness. So I'm just going to sit on the, the, the concept of training real quick. Training means intentionally pushing yourself beyond what you would otherwise do. It means stressing a weak muscle. That's an important word, stressing. It's necessary. Stressing a weak muscle and improving skill because the competency you're after is more valuable to you than the momentary comfort of the status quo. And isn't that a good definition? Because the it's stressing a weak muscle because the competency you're after is more valuable to you than the momentary comfort of the status quo. So is it important to train yourself? Well, I just told you it's a biblical command to train yourself. Is it important for your wife to be trained? It is unless she came out of the womb um, sinless. Yeah, she's going to have to undergo the same kind of pain that you are. Is it important for your children to be trained? Well, it is if you want them to do anything worthwhile in their lifetime. If you want them to be a burden and a disappointment and an embarrassment and an albatross around your neck, then don't sweat it. They don't need any training. They're going to they're gonna do that on their own. Wait a second. Oh, I just remembered something. Train up your children in the Lord, for this is the right thing to do. Proverbs 22, 6. So that's not an option, actually. The whole having the kids be an albatross around your neck, that's not an option because your command is to train your children. We believe that there's training needed everywhere. And if you're going to lead your home, which is what this uh, program is about, you're going to have to be on board with training. We talk about that in so many forms around here all the time. So we're going to need spiritual training. You, you made me think of Titus 2.11, that the God's uh, spirit teach us to say no. You're going to have to train yourself relationally and be trained relationally. That is putting time aside, uh, biting your tongue, um, having a habit of putting others' needs in front of yours, not blowing your stack at the first provocation. That's relational training. You're going to need to be physically trained. That's exercise, not when you feel like it. That's not training. Doing exercise when you don't feel like it. That's when training matters. Intellectually training. You know, I think we've just aired a fantastic episode of best books of the year and reading stuff that's good for your mind and expanding your mind. And then, of course, finally, financially, we need to be trained financially. And that the trouble that we find, Mark and I find this over and over and over with people, is that they assume that the worldview they currently have when it comes to finances is fine. So I'm just going to walk forward with however I am right now. And they have an attitude, which is, why don't you just love me the way I am? Because that's the way I am. And let's build all my finances the way around the way that I am now. And maybe I need to be trained uh, in my career so that I can get better there. Maybe I need to be trained in my marriage so that I can get better there. But when it comes to finances, love me the way that I am. And the Bible would tell us there's all sorts of ways to be regarding money that are helpful and life-giving. And there are ways to be towards money which are poisonous and destructive to you. So there are things that we should do uh, to train ourselves toward godliness, going back to 1 Timothy 4, 7, in all sorts of these areas. And there are godly attitudes to have toward money, and there are ungodly attitudes to have toward money. So we believe that uh, training yourself financially means, 
I am now referring to a bunch of episodes just by ticking off these categories. We think that you can train yourself to save. We think you can train yourself to invest. We think that you should train yourself to give and should do so. And we think that uh, there's some giving that is more valuable than other giving. We think that that's a, that's a skill. And this month, uh, February, that we're about to come into is training yourself regarding spending, which is the most common thing you do with money is to spend it. And yet many of us have had no training about spending. It's just like, well, spend it and try not to spend more than you've got. But you know, if you do spend more than you've got, oh, well, there's always credit cards because that's how America works. And so our annual habit, I know I'm coming back into basically uh, your intro, Mark, but our annual habit around here is Lodo Feb. Uh, why February? I got a couple of reasons why February. One is the shortest month. Got an so, extra day this year, though. <laughs> well, it's still the shortest month. I know, but man, that, that 29th <laughs> hurts extra. Um, it's the shortest month. It's also in the dark days of winter. When you'll be holed up anyways, you're not typically throwing lawn parties. You're not out grilling for the neighbors. It's, it's, kind, of a, it's kind of a hunker down month, so um, it doesn't hurt as bad. There's not new fashions coming out this month. It's not typically when they're rolling them out because there's not a season change that stuff happens uh, around uh, Christmas. So, you know, it's, it's a month where the, the cost isn't great to... Um, to, to limiting yourself. And we just figure, gosh, if we could get more families to just try to limit themselves as a discipline, it would make a big difference. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I also forgot when I kind of summarized our, our tradition of Lodo Feb to say maybe one of the most fun parts, which is at the end of the month, we look at your normal budget and we look at what you actually spent. And if you've had any success at all, there's a difference like it, whether that's we spent $50 less or $3,000 less, there's a difference. And uh, what we do with that is a part of the fun. So some families, they go, we would love to just put it all into the generosity bucket. But it turns out we're one of those families that didn't do spending well before and we owe $5,000 of credit card debt. And we would yeah. tell them, let's pay a huge chunk of it off this month. Right. Uh, other families are not in that spot and we would go, what What fun to engage your whole family in this saving thing and not spending uh, and then also engage them in, guys, we we have $600 right. extra. What can, where can we put it that would bless others? Uh, and so we, we love that. And another, that's just, it made me think of it because that's another reason it's fun to do in February because- yeah. My grocery budget is the same in February as it is in January. And just the fact that it's a slightly shorter month means I'm already a little bit ahead in having a little bit extra that month. So it just gives you a little bit extra wiggle room with which <laughs> you can experience the delight and joy of having a, a extra a chunk of generosity to hand out. And let me just say, if you ask the Lord for this whole month, Lord, show me where it is that you would like our family to put mm. the savings that, that we generate through our efforts. And you yep. speak to your family the whole time. Well, not only are we doing this because it's good for us, but also at the end of this month, we're going we're gonna to bless the socks off somebody. Right. Um, I promise you, it will be a joyful and meaningful way where you get to activate your unique yes. family vision and give just creates ownership from everybody. Yep. A little two-year-old Susie who didn't get to go to the to the trampoline park this month. Yep. Uh, you say, you know how you you were willing not to do that, even though you kicked and cried, but like you didn't do it. <laughs> well, that's that means that we get to help this family who's one of those families who's going through unemployment right now, or yep. who knows what. Whatever the Lord brings across your desk, that's part of why we do it. And February being a short month makes it just a little bit easier. I want, if you're listening and considering this for the first time, I want you to consider the difference for a child in just being told, just do less, it's good for you all month, as opposed to do less, this is going to help us pay for the beach trip we're hoping to take this summer, we're putting that money aside for that, 
or as you say, Mark, a generosity thing. Don't you remember how the Joneses told us that they weren't going to be able to pay those hospital bills and we're helping them to pay those hospital bills. And we, I don't know how big our gift is going to be, but the more we say no to ourselves this month, the bigger that gift is going to be. What a difference for a child learning the, the value of saying no to themselves for the sake of, or of someone else. Or even, you know, for us, part of our uh, savings this month is going toward a mission trip that we're taking this year. And for a child to even be able to say to themselves, I'm putting off some minor pleasure in the moment. It's just a small thing. No, you can't have gummy bears when we go to the grocery store. So that's a buck 50 less. Well, that buck 50 is going to make something that is a lifetime event for our family, this mission trip to happen. Big, big difference in just going, no, just do, just do without. It's good for you to learn to go without. That's, it's not a great way to train when people don't have a, a goal, a motive to, to move them towards. Level one Lodo Feb is we're going to Costco on the 31st. You're hearing this. If you're a faithful and loyal listener, you're probably hearing this. It's about 5 a.m. on Wednesday morning. Yeah, right. Um, but uh, level 10 is, you know, our last shopping trip was January 22nd. And I guess uh, I guess we're going to the depths of the of the chest freezer this month. Yes. OK, so you can you can train yourself for a number of things using this tool we're trying to hand you which is one, of course, you can train yourself to spend less. That's a really valuable skill. If you've never had to do that, um, if you've never had seasons of less in your life, um, college specifically in the years right after college were definitely that time for me. And it's really valuable. Like my daughter, when she goes to college, is not going to be in the same situation that I was in financially. However, I'm thinking of making that I'm thinking of how, I shouldn't say I'm thinking of whether to do it. I'm thinking of how I'm still going to make sure that those are lean times for her so that she has to be choosy with, with funds. I think that's a very good thing. I'm, I can quote the Bible on this one. It's good for a young man to struggle. It's good for a young man. That's what, that's what the scriptures say. It's good for him to work. I don't think it's a good idea to have an 18-year-old that goes off to college in a new car knowing that everything will be paid for them and and they can live it up. I, that's not a good way to raise uh, somebody that you want to be uh, the next generation that carries on and grows multi-generational wealth. Not a good plan. So the first is to train yourself to spend less. And if that hurts you, you know, then then take a take a note from the the gurus of uh, personal fitness who say things like uh, pain is uh, weakness leaving the body. So when you feel like I wish I could buy that extra thing for me, but it's low dough. Oh, I can't have it because it's low dough. Well, and and your flesh will do that. By the way, it will complain and groan and whine like a baby. And when it whines like that, you can just say to yourself, "Well, I must need this." This is good for me. If my, my flesh doesn't get to win all the time, we're training that thing. I even would say I, I try to go beyond just the numbers because, for example, I have two different business travel days uh, in the month of Lodo Feb. So that means the expenses are all going to be covered by my business accounts, which don't run through my normal budget. And I could... I could. I'm taking clients to to an event. I could say, I'm going to go have a steak and just fill my belly up and get my fill of luxury because it doesn't count. It's not a part of it. It'll, it won't even reflect on our month-end savings statement. But I think there's value in practicing. Like I'm going to have a, a salad and move on when I go to that work dinner that night. I'm going to not cheat, if you will. And, and that goes beyond just the, the financial component of it and says, we're really trying to use this as a soul and mind discipline exercise. You, you are leading me into my second thing. You we're training ourselves to spend less. Yes, that's a technical skill you need to have. But secondly, we're training ourselves to be content with less. I am telling you, dads, if you want to be the leader in this thing, if you want your family to be trained by this little exercise of Lodofeb, please do so. And you better watch your mouth. 
So don't let yourself do any groaning or complaining or whining about it. You can do that with other guys. You can do that with us. If you're like, it's really hard for me. I'm, I'm used to doing this one little perk for myself. That's fine. But don't train your family in that because we're trying to train something else, which is contentment with less. I always love to sit and this, I'm just throwing this out, a little, little freebie for you here. On the night when we do have, as Mark said, when we have the beans and rice, and maybe we had a little, what we do in those deals is we have a little, maybe a little protein that is finely chopped and sprinkled over everyone's. So if it's, if it's uh, beans and rice and we cooked three pieces of bacon and then we crumbled them up and got them spring it, when we finish that meal, I will always say, man, wasn't that good? And you know what I'm thinking to myself? I'm as full right now as if we had had sirloin steak. Man, isn't this great? Man, praise God. Thank you that we can have beans and rice. Beans are a good hack on that front. (laughs) Just so you know, they create a feeling of fullness that you don't get from from ahi tuna. (laughs) (laughs) That's, That's true. That's true. So here's a little, here's a little Bible for you. Paul says, I know what it is to be in need. And I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. Now is the appropriate use of this verse. I can do all of this through Christ who gives me strength. I guess you could win a Super Bowl and quote that verse at the end of it if you want. That verse is often misused. What, the, what that verse really means is that I can go through times of suffering and times of lack and make it with my faith intact and gratitude intact because of Christ in me. So I'm encouraging you, dads, if you're going to lead your family through this, you have to live this out for yourself first, which is, God, I want you to teach me the secret of how to be content with less, just as I hopefully am content when there's more. So let contentment be the theme of our and the hallmark of our home through this month. That's a really great little insight from Paul. Thank you very much for writing the Bible, Paul. And then lastly, is we're training our money. I said that we're training ourselves to spend less. Um, We're training ourselves to be content with less. And we're training our money not to be our master and saying that the amount of money that we have is not going to be the determining factor on what we spend and how much we spend. We are going to be the ones who decide that based on whatever we think God's telling us. You know, there are a lot of amazing stories of people who lived on 10% of their income and gave 90% away. There there are books on that. There's whole organizations that are written about uh, generosity and the power of the power of giving. The lesson, the biblical lesson that all of us need to learn is that money can't be our master. And our master, our king, said in Luke 12, 15, Beware, guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. Or he said, uh, some, NIV says, the quantity of a man's possessions. So be on your guard against all kinds of greed. You know, if, um, if the friends are all going to Starbucks and they're living it up and they don't even think about money. They just go, I want that and that and that. Bring them to me. I don't care what it costs. Just put this piece of plastic in the machine and then we can go on. And you are thinking about the cost. You're thinking about money. Oh, that's outside of my Lodo budget. I I spent my little gift card. I don't have anything left. Newsflash, life is not about the abundance of your possessions and you're to be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Greed isn't being the richest guy in town. Greed is having that grabby thing happen in your soul that just wants to grab for more. That's what greed is. I want that. I want more. I want this. I want this. And if you can't go into the gap without thinking, I've got to have the two things that I want, you've got a greed problem. And I think Lodo is a really helpful tool because it's a family accountability to work on greed, which is a killer. We're supposed to be on our guard against all kinds of greed. So I'm, I'm at the point of my relationship with Lodo <laughs> that if other families don't do anything like this, okay, so be it. But I have to ask, 
I, I have to ask brothers who, who won't walk down this road with me, what are you doing? Do you do anything to war against greed? Do you, what are you doing to say no when you want some, when you want food and you want to spend the most on fancy food? And what are you doing to, to train yourself to be no, to say no? So that greed thing is important. And, and, uh, you've, you've kind of got this with the way you're talking about the family, but uh, I'll just say it can, you can make it a game with, with the kids. It can be fun. It doesn't have to be onerous. It should be fun. When the kids discover some Halloween candy that they found in a back drawer and they run down the stairs happily and they're going to share, I, everybody gets three M&Ms from this packet. Guess what I found? That's really fun. And that wouldn't happen otherwise. So those kind of make that kind of make that kind of game atmosphere. And it's really the joy that I think we've lost. You know, we were talking about gift giving at Christmas and we talked about how both of us have had the experience of hearing an older relative talk about, well, at Christmas, I remember I'd unwrap my stocking and there would be just a perfect orange in there and I'd be so happy. And we go, well, our kids can't even fathom that because they're used to like, feeling a little icky at the end of Christmas because it's like, wow, there's so much stuff here. So much crap. And, and by kind of re- rewinding a bit and just pulling back on that, we do recapture something of the the joy of whether it's a, a really tasty but inexpensive meal or finding that candy treat or, you know, in my case, it's going to be, it's it's midway through the month and I am feeling a little bit uh, depleted on the protein front. So I'm going to go ahead and throw down that Chipotle gift card and uh, <laughs> fill up the tank and it's going to feel extra special. So uh, whatever it is, I think the saying no also makes the saying yes better. And it of course dramatically lowers the bar for what it takes us overfed, overstimulated, overentertained Americans to feel uh, pleasure and satisfaction. And we just... That's right. We know that that's a problem for probably the least plugged in and the least uh, overindulged person listening to this. You're still probably at about a thousand X of what your great, great, great grandfather was where he at some point was like, well, the sun's down, so I guess I can sleep or I can use some of that candle I've got if I really need to read something. Right. That's about it. That's right. Yeah, we live in a in a gray area of having enough all the time. Most Americans do, so we don't uh, we don't taste the edge, the pang, uh, the edge of want from like fasting, for instance. Most people don't fast, nor do most people live in a place of living below their means, so that feasting actually means something. So when we say, "Hey, Sukkot, we're going to have bacon wrapped shrimp." And we're going to have sliced avocado on our salmon. Everybody kind of shrugs or shrugs. Well, we have all that all the time anyways. Why yeah. is that special? So it's better for us to live in that, in that middle ground um, where we can we feel it if we go less and we feel it if we go more. All right. So that's what we believe about Lodo Feb. Before we leave, you brought something up a couple of weeks ago. And I wanted you to tell the people, how did it go? You mentioned um, an audit. Didn't you mention getting audited? Yeah, so part of owning the type of business that we own is that the the regulators come and make sure you're obeying the rules. It sounds it sounds a little scary because we think of an IRS audit. Usually that means something has been flagged and you might be up to no good. In this case, it's a routine procedure. And I was just thankful because we had a meeting. Basically, what happens next is they spend a few weeks going through everything we provided and then come back and it was sort of interesting because he said, well, there's four things that happen next. He's like, option A, we send you a letter saying, good job. Everything looks great. He said that happens about one out of a million times. Uh, Most commonly, they send you what's called a deficiency letter where they just tell you, here's the things we'd like you to fix. And there are things like, well, we'd really like to see this change in your invoices or et cetera, et cetera. Small adjustments. We know that these are marginal tweaks. Option three is we send you a letter saying we're filing a civil claim against you and fining you. Whoops. That's not the worst option, which is option four, which is 
we come back with the police and you go to jail because you've you've been implicated in criminal uh, investigations. I hope you've enjoyed doing business. It's now over. <laughs> Not only is doing business over, but you're going to be having Lodo decade because <laughs> you're going to the slammer. Uh, and Have you ever had gruel? Have you ever had gruel three days a week for six months in a row? Enjoy that. Yeah, that's so that's it's routine, level. but it's it's more routine. It's routine like a rectal exam is routine. <laughs> no, actually, I was really thankful. The people that came were very gentle in their examination. Oh, <laughs> so good. They were, they were good guys, and yeah, we've never really. We've never really even thrown that out there as kind of level twenty Lodo Feb is go to jail for a year, you know. Yeah, really yeah, 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 yeah. You'll you'll enjoy a good Sukkot so much after Yeah, uh, right, right, right. You wanna really enjoy feasting? Yeah. That's all we got. I think the parrot family is going to you know, I'm feeling I'm feeling pretty good today, but unfortunately I've passed along all my illnesses to my family. Mm. So I think my weekend is going to be about uh, caring, nursing, caring for some sick ladies. All right. Well, uh, hopefully they don't need too much expensive medicine. And you go into February uh, lean and mean. We, we only have the medicine we have. And if we go into February and it's all gone, we'll call the barber to, to bleed you. I That's guess right. if you get a fever or, or dig up a dig up a root and like bleed, bleed it out for nutrients or something. Make a poultice. Of- yeah, poultice. Like a frog and some spices and rub it on your chest or something. That's it. All right, sweet. Adios. Bye. Hey, if you liked this content, be sure to like it and subscribe and share it with somebody. And remember, no matter how you're doing and leading your family, God's love for you is huge. And His grace is... Granted! Granted!